Welcome back. Last week we brought safety gear, an outboard, Ooh. service star winches. Where's all that going, going, Zach? Right in this pot. Yeah, and what's the pot used for normally? Uh, washing up and everything like that, but it's metal. Washing so up? Washing up? Washing up, but... Cooking? Cooking. I guess that's what we've come to now. Is everything has to have a dual purpose, and if it means slightly terpsy food, that is what it is. And greasy. Scrubbed the hole, took our traveller apart, and did our VHF course. This week we have our good friend Paul and his son Anion on board. We were on track for our first sail. However, it just wouldn't be any fun unless something went wrong. Am I right? Oh my gosh. But now we've got water in places we don't want water. I feel like I've spent the whole day sponging the boat dry. And it's still collecting in the bilge higher than the bilge which has the bilge pump in, which isn't ideal. So instead of open seas, settle in for epoxy mixing, mould cleaning, jug discovering. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> no, that was empty. Oh, what? Oh, I hope that hasn't leaked somewhere. Yeah, Hole drilling, sponge squeezing video of us fixing our brand new boat. What have you found? Glad you can all be here for it. We are checking the chain plates that hold the shrouds in place at the moment to make sure they're not rusted or corroded or leaking in water. Okay. Do you want to see a chain plate? Yeah. That one's not shiny as the other one, but that's what's holding the shrouds up because yeah. it's holding the mast up. This is the other cover. I took those yeah. off and you can see the screws that side and that nice. side and that's up there. But they put those plastic coatings out yeah. on there just to cover up. It's the only way it's there actually. Just to cover up that. So what we could do is sand that off yeah. and then revarnish that. I'm just hoping to get in between that. And yes, it's so. Like that. Yeah. Love it. Oh, it's working. Oh, there you go. Hi, we did it. Okay, so this bolt head is absolutely fine. What? And yeah, this. Bolt. Well, that's a relief. The, the chain plate's been perfect. Now. Oh, I forgot about the middle bit. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. Ow. Looks pretty good to me. Yeah. After checking all the chain plates, we moved on to the unexpected storage space under the pilot berth and found quite the mystery down there. It's just extra water storage because it did say 500 litres of like, water. water in here. They could be from like, 20 years ago, which is weird that there's like that hatch. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit odd, isn't it? One, two. No, that one's empty. Oh, what? Oh, I hope that hasn't leaked somewhere. That might have leaked into the build. <laughs> so many. There are so many. Can I fit down there? Yeah, probably. If I fold you in half and put it in the edge. <laughs> that's just ridiculous. Personally, if you want to convert that into a tank, that's it. That's easy to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've already got all the plumbing for another tank. Right, so... So it would just be a case of hooking Yeah, and I mean, you could just connect it off to so this one think... anyway. The, uh, the other, like, separator for the tank is there anyway, so... We think that's what he was hoping easy. to do at some point, because he's literally plumbed in another one, and we thought... That, so it says top tank and bottom tank there, and we turned it, it doesn't do anything. One's blocked off, one goes no, to right, nothing. Yeah. So it's, when we fill that up, it goes up the tube and does nothing. Right. So it fills up really quickly. So we thought one tank was just staying really full. Yeah. When we looked at, down into it, we found actually there's no tank. So there's one tank, one tank, and then we, we've already got all the plumbing in for that. So it would so make we could, sense. you could put one tank across there. You've got yeah. one in. You one have 400 litres and then no, no jugs. Yeah. Yeah. Now the boat does still feel flat. Yeah. Are you sure it's not tilting slightly? <laughs> if it is, it's because we haven't drunk enough rum. I think we should that start on that bottle of rum. That can definitely be arranged. What he probably did was he put it in and was like, damn it, it's leaning. What can I do, which is a really quick and easy and efficient way to make it balance? I know, I'll put all these jugs in and we've come along and been like, let's throw them all away. You know what, it will lean in more once our water tanks get empty in there as well. Oh yeah, it will. Is this yeah, a but, mistake? Should we, just, should we just empty them and refill them? <laughs> no, let's get rid of it. It's really leaning. It is leaning slightly. What? What's down there? Oh my gosh. So much mould, Zach. Really? Oh my. That's so bad. Oh golly. Okay, well that's definitely the worst corner of our boat. Is it that bad? Yeah. It's, that's those jugs that have leaked over time, isn't it? They should, have, they should have slowly gone down the bill. That do I have to dilute this? Yeah, Can it be used neat or um, diluted for greater coverage? To be fair, it was a tenner, we'll probably dilute it. What do we have that you can, dilute, that you can mix stuff in? In a saucepan, I guess. Okay. Just to... Oh, that's so satisfying! Wow! We used the hose outside to wash down the newly scrubbed bilge and very quickly, mould became the least of our issues. The bilge where the pump is is empty 
and everything under here where all that water went I can still hear it sloshing around it's just full down here which probably means one of the bong holes is stopped the steering pulleys are all in water now and it's slowly coming out from there there's no hole there at all oh. where we washed all the water through to rinse off all the mould it's just collected in the highest bilge and then it's slowly trickling down just in any gap it can find and it's still collecting in the bilge higher than the bilge which has the bilge pump in which isn't ideal <laughs> so now we have not only gross water in there we have gross water in there and slightly in the kitchen okay. what have you found oh okay so that is where all the water is behind there but why is it collecting there and that's moldy wet so that's obviously had water in it before just drill a hole in that i'm gonna drill a hole in it first and then we'll have a little look see it afterwards there is just so much water can you see i'm just not sure on the camera at all there's a lot in there. Oh my gosh. That's what it was meant to do before. Yeah. But we've got to figure out a more permanent solution because otherwise the wood is all just going to rot, isn't it? Yep. There's also electrics running through that. There's a quote I remember hearing once that said something like, sometimes it's three steps forward and two steps back. In moments like these, it's important to remember that when hurdles surface, we are still one step ahead than we used to be. The rest of the video goes a bit like that. Small success, issue. Small success, issue. But what is important to remember is this. These are the days you dreamed of. You didn't just dream of the good, you dreamt of the good and the bad because the good isn't life, it's not reality. I vowed to myself when we left Swansea that I wasn't gonna cross off the days anymore in my diary because we were on such a countdown to get the boat that I just forgot how to live in that moment. I just, I just was so focused on this. I just wanted the time to pass and looking back that makes me so sad it was just such a waste of living to just be crossing off days I just I can't, I can't believe I was doing that and and this is a similar situation I don't want to be just thinking about oh I just can't wait till this is fixed or I just can't wait till the boat is you know how I want it to be or I can't wait to get out sailing or whatever we need to enjoy now because that is life <laughs> you know and if we don't enjoy the now You've got nothing left, you know? This is life and we've got to just soak it in and enjoy it for the good things and the bad things. If you're having a hard day, don't wish it away. Life is short enough as it is and just take the, the rough and the smooth, you know? The yin and the yang. I keep saying that on this boat. I think it's like the, the saying of the boat. The good within the bad and the bad within the good. But it's, this is the good and I've got to, I've just got to remain grateful because this is what we chose to do and I couldn't be happier. Yeah, the reason that whole pilot berth was mouldy was because it had nowhere to go. It's, yeah, it's just... Except this wood. There's no hole for water to go through. I'm putting a screwdriver through the hole now. I can't see where the screwdriver is. I guess your screwdriver must be underwater. All the water in here has just stayed in here. Yeah, there's nowhere for that to go either. Okay, we're going in. You're doing a great job, Becca. Moral support! Go on, Becca! But now we've got water in places we don't want water. What are you doing, Zach? I'm drying out a bilge that hasn't got a hole in it at the moment. Because it's stinking. And it's probably the most awkward one to get to, because my head only just fits down here. <laughs> and it's kind of scary getting it back out because it's very tight. We're going to stick a hairdryer down there to dry out the rest of it because we've got heaters in here, but obviously heat rises and never really gets that hot down there. This is going to be dangled down for a bit and I'm going to keep an eye on it obviously because I don't want to just leave a, um, a hairdryer dangling down the bill. Just after a lot of scrubbing, siphoning and sponging, the majority of the water was out and it was time to sit down, have a drink and chat about life with our good friends. The next phase of the job could wait until the next day. Good morning everyone. Today is a, a busy day, I say that so often, but it is. I need to get some drill bits and drill a hole in a bilge, which is incredibly scary, but we obviously need some drill bits to do that. I need to buy some epoxy and... I also need to find a, a bit of carbon fibre or a mast of a windsurf or something, a tube, so I can cut it and put it through the hole that we cut and embed it in epoxy. Um, I need to do that and I don't know exactly where I'm going to find that. I also need to get a siphon for our fuel tank because I'm going to siphon all the fuel out at some point. I think that's it. Oh, I need to post something too. The radiator is still down there drying that bilge out. I think 
I'm pretty happy that by the time this evening comes around that will be dry. The hole I can see right now is just so funny. We had to drill a hole in the wood because there was just water coming out of it, but it's, <laughs> it is funny. I have to do it with a multi-tool with a flat saw. <laughs> so it was like <laughs> da -da -da. I got some goodies. I got some Seeker Flex, which is the thing that everyone keeps recommended for adhesive. I got this oil pump for when we empty the fuel tank out. And then I also got West System Epoxy. I got 105 and 205, which we are gonna use. Oh, I didn't get a windsurf mask. Okay, I'm going back in. <laughs> I'll be back in a second. What a result. I went back in, chatted to the same guy, and he locked me off a bit of a carbon fiber wind surf mast and just gave it to me for free, which is really, really nice. It's pretty wide, but I think that could work and actually it might work better because it means more water from that bilge will be able to go through. Very happy about that. And we've got ourselves a little tube. Okay, so Zach's home from work and we are going to drill a hole in our boat. <laughs> It's time. Which one are we going to use? We're going to use that. Unknowingly, you got the exact right size, it looks like. Oh yeah, look at that. That's really satisfying. You definitely don't want to go on the right one. Yeah, I can see your light. Stick your finger through the hole. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. Okay, nice. So you just want to go about... I'm just going to grab a ruler and just see to where the bottom of the bilge is on this. Okay. 21. Oh, that's perfect. Yes. So I want to drill, drill right at the bottom of that, ideally. Yeah. So that's the hole there, which is in the other one. And that bilge out there slopes down like that way. So I want to go in the corner of here. So I'm just checking there's nothing in the corner. I want to go to the rounded bit. Let me just look again. Measure twice, cut once. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. We just wanted to pop in and say a massive, massive, massive thank you to everyone who has bought something from our Amazon wish list already. We're really grateful. I went into the office and they were saying, we've got some parcels and then it's just the stack. People are so kind. One of the guys' names is Bob, so thank you so much. The other person's name is George. I know there's other people, but they're the ones with the gift notes in them. So we are really, really grateful and you guys are really helping us on with our journey. So yeah, anyway, back to the video. Alright? Yeah, it looks epic, Zach. Well done. Big old hole. Okay, so Zach's just in the engine bilge and we don't have a hoover, so we've been trying to brush out as much sawdust as possible so it's all clean, but we've had to resort to using my hairdryer to blast through the hole and get rid of all the sawdust. Did, they, did that work okay? I think so. We're on the home stretch now. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Okay, that looks epic, Zach. Now we need to measure and see how much to saw off. How much am I doing? Two and a half. Bear? If it says two and a half. I'm not claustrophobic, but going into that gap is pretty intense because you go down through the step, you have to turn your head, so you can't even just like pull your head out if you need to. You have to turn your head and twist in. Once your chest goes through here, you kind of get stuck. And obviously I'm the only one on board, so that's a pretty scary feeling. But me and Zach have done quite a lot of caving and we've read into when people get stuck, it's usually because they've squished through gaps with the breathing in and then they breathe out and then they can't get out and that was just in my head and as I went in you just have to keep saying to yourself keep calm you are fine you are fine but you just can't panic because if you did panic it's like in diving if you panic in diving you can't just shoot to the surface you have to like think about it and go really slowly in there I was just going down and I was like don't panic don't panic deep breaths but there was a few points I was like ah. <laughs> But anyway, I'm happy with this side now. I'm just gonna go around to the engine room and make sure that one's okay. We currently have my towel down there, so 
water doesn't get to it and it looks really dry actually which is nice and then I need to just go in and make sure there's no gaps looking good so there's water in there still you can't really see much but I need to clean out this thing because that is gross and that's what we're drinking out of you know what, we're just going to take that top off and see what happens, but I'm going to get a bowl. Actually, there's no point me even getting a bowl because there's already water down there, so I'll probably add to that and then I'll just siphon the whole lot out. It's a bit gross. I'm going to take a photo of this as well and order a bunch more. Okay, I messed up there. So what I did was obviously I took the strainer off and then I went and ran the tap and it was needing to be strained and there was just water coming out. <laughs> so, uh, let me just try and get that to stop quickly. So now the plan is to get a bowl of water and then take the thingy off, put it in the bowl, wash it, put it back on because otherwise the water is going to go everywhere. <laughs> you can actually see microplastics in there which is pretty crazy. Oh, I messed up. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. There's paint. No, there's grease. Oh, no. There's grease on the bottom of this saucepan. I've got grease there. Ah! Oh, please come out. I shouldn't have used that, though. That's black. Great. Back up. I need an extra arm here. Should I use my foot? <laughs> Gotta get creative. Oh, that just is not easy. Come on! Guys, we have a proper issue. I went to just check the through hole and it was literally dry 10 minutes ago and since filling up the water tank it's now dripping wet. So all the epoxy I put on is now soaked. So I need to now drain the bilge. Oh, why does this have to happen? It was going so well, and I really hope it doesn't really ruin the epoxy, because obviously it's wet now. Oh. All I can do is dry it out and hope for the best. I feel like I've spent the whole day sponging the boat dry. I sponged outside the deck, I siphoned the water out the bilge, and now I'm doing this. I'm just hoping I put my hair dry back down here, get it warm, but they say epoxy shouldn't be exposed to that higher temperatures. And I can't put a radiator down here. There's no room for it and heat rises, so upstairs it won't. <sighs> okay, I better go check the other one. So how was the building wet? Do you know where the water might have come from? No, that's the whole thing. We were literally not running any taps or anything. The only thing I did do was I filled up the water tank and I think it must have come from that. I couldn't see anything coming ah, out. Yeah, you, you filled up the water tank with the hose. Mm -hmm. Did you turn the valve side to the other? I've actually put the cork in the end of that tube again, but I did turn it the right way. It was just filling up the main tank, so there was no reason it should have gone in there. But it was so annoying because we spent all that time getting it perfect and then we left it 12 hours and it says that you leave it for 48 and then I added some more epoxy because it was still dry by this morning and then literally an hour later I went to check on it and it was sitting in water. That's no, okay, that's fine. Do you okay, think? Okay, so the first, yeah, the first layer of epoxy yeah. that you put on had cured. It's been there for 12 hours, yeah? Yeah. Don't worry about it. I've done epoxy boat repairs underwater before now and they've held. Okay, that makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't get stressed. And the worst case scenario is you sand it back and you do another bit. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Your concern is, mm -hmm. where did the water come from? The only tube going into the bilge at the moment, because I've directed them all into like saucepans and pots, the only one I haven't is, there's one that comes from the water tank, but I don't know if it's like a pressure release or something. It's it was... an overflow. Oh, it's an overflow. <laughs> oh, really? But surely it just comes out the top if it's full. Oh, uh. and I guess that is where we're up to. The hole held great, even with the water, and is dry now. And at least we now know what that one mysterious leaky pipe is. We're living and we're learning, and we couldn't be happier. Thank you for your ongoing support, and to our patrons for creating the tailie. Till next time. When I know you're coming home soon, and you know if you ever fall down, well, I'd be there for you.